Hey guys, happy Monday. Um, welcome back to another one of my weekly vlog videos here on YouTube. It's been a little while since I've done this style of weekly vlog video. Um, I have been doing some individual specific sort of videos here for a little bit. Um, but I've kind of missed doing these weekly vlogs where I check in with you guys each day and share a little bit of what we're up to each day of the week. So I thought this week that I would do one of those again. So I'm sorry if the lighting is weird. It's really dark outside. Um, we just had daylight savings time. So I don't know why, but it always throws me off whether it's spring or fall. I'm always every single year, twice a year, I'm always shocked at wow, it's bright so late, or wow, it's dark so early. <laughs> anyway, it feels really dark to me, and it feels like I should be getting ready to go to bed soon, um, but I have several more hours before bed. Anyway, um, today, actually, this is our first week with no school. We're on our winter break. Um, we actually have three months of no school before we start back on our regular um, rotation, the way we do our school schedule. I homeschool my boys, so um, in February we will start back and we will go through all of spring, all of summer, all of fall, and complete a school year next year. But we're on a winter break, so three months of no school. And my boys asked if um, last week when we were wrapping up the last bit of our schoolwork, the boys were like, Mom, when we finish up school, can we have a whole day where we can play video games or play on our tablets or play on the computer or just do like a complete tech day? Because normally they only get one hour a day of tech time. So I'm not a huge fan of, you know, tablets and video games and things like that. I grew up playing video games here and there, not anything um, too excessive. Obviously, we didn't have smartphones when I was younger, so I don't know what life is like growing up with technology right at your fingertips. I do see how addictive it can be as an adult, and I'm sure that's even um, more addictive maybe as a young child because you have less self-control when you're younger. Um, but I'm not anti-technology because that's the world we live in. This is the direction that we're going. And I think that um, there are a lot of skills to be gained from those things. Um, but I do think that technology, like anything else in life, requires moderation. And as a parent to four young children, it's my job to help them learn self-control um, so normally we only have one hour of tech time a day when we're in our normal school. Um, well, actually, I guess I shouldn't even say when we're, we're in our normal school schedule because even during winter break, we will still have one hour a day. But I did say yes to their question. They say, can we have one whole day of just playing as much as we want? And I said, okay, that'll be like a fun little reward. We finished up the whole school year. You guys did great. They did they did really well. And um, we will have a day, and today was that day, where they got to play video games longer than normal. Um, they watched YouTube. They just did all of this fun stuff. Now, I did say you have to get your chores done. So they did do a good bit of chores today. And um, let me think what else they did. There was something else that I had them do besides playing video games and chores. I can't think what it is. Anyway, um, so they had that done today and that's over with. So tomorrow we will be back on a regular kind of routine of one hour of tech time a day. Now they are at piano tonight with Dean, which is typical for our Monday nights. And I am continuing to clean my house and I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, I'm getting ready to start dinner. Um, probably in about an hour I'll start dinner and then it'll be ready when they get home. And I am probably going to take a hot bath tonight because it's cold and I feel like a bath. Um, okay, so today I have been cleaning my house and kind of reorganizing. Um, I packed up some boxes and took them over to the shop and then I stuck some out in our garage. Boxes that I have seriously had in this house since we moved in a year ago because I had a bunch of like decor from our house on the mountain and I was like, I need to have it here so I can see it and so I can put it in the house um, 
and if I put it over in the shop then I'll forget about it and then I won't you know continue to decorate this house but it's kind of stuff that's just been sitting in this box and I can't find a place for it because this style um, the house that we're in now I'm kind of styling it differently than I did our house in the mountain So some of these things I just don't have a place for them yet And I am just so tired of seeing them sitting here in my floor So I told Dean today after lunch um, He helped me put some stuff in the garage and then we carried some stuff over to the shop because I needed to get it out of the house Now that we're done with school I was able to clean the family room out and get all of the school books like all of our um like books that the boys have already read this year, any of our textbook kind of things or reference books. I put all of that stuff out in the garage. I did leave little piles of reading books that the boys are still going to read throughout winter break and um, some handicraft stuff, some art stuff that we're gonna continue to work on. Those things are still out and I need to figure out how to organize that. Um, but the reason that I am cleaning and washing all the sheets and all the clothes and just trying to get everything kind of more organized and neater looking today is because Dean's best friend from Pennsylvania is coming down to stay with us for several days. He's going to be here late on Wednesday night and he's staying um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I think all day Sunday. And I think he's leaving on Monday. Um, but I could be wrong. He may be leaving on Sunday. Anyway, he and his son are coming down and they're staying with us here in the house. Um, we've never had any overnight guests before. Um, we've been here for a year and we're just constantly cleaning up and you know, the Dean just went to Pennsylvania, uh, two, maybe three weeks ago to stay with him for a while. And he's coming down now to stay with us for a while. So I have moved, I will be moving two of the boys out of their bedroom They'll stay on cots in the other brother's bedroom. Um, so it'll be like old times in our house on the mountain where they were all in one room. <laughs> um, and then our guests will stay in their bedroom, the other boy's bedroom. So um, yeah, it's gonna be cozy. It's gonna be a cozy four days. Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to clean up um, and organize things so that there's room for uh, eight of us instead of six of us. Um, we have some plans they're not set in stone definite plans but we kind of have some ideas of some things that we're going to do while they're down um anyway so i've been doing that today cleaning straightening up and i will probably continue working on that tuesday and wednesday as well um i also pulled out um i don't know if you guys if you've watched my channel long and i taken you around the house or i've done any of my aldi hauls you'll notice in my kitchen i have a cabinet missing in the corner it's um it's like i got a lazy susan in it and ezra my youngest was climbing up on the counter one day to grab a cup and as he came down his shirt got like hung on the knob on that lower cabinet and because it's like an l-shaped cabinet it like ripped it in half and just totally destroyed the cabinet so we had another one built we took it down to the local um like lumber yard and they actually built all of the cabinetry in this kitchen when this house was first built and so we had them remake that and they um they painted it or they primed it actually and i've had it sitting in my garage for seriously maybe four months i mean it's it's been a while so i finally drug it inside today put a big piece of plastic on my counter put the new door on the counter and I painted it and I am getting ready to go in there, there and seal it, put the little sealing um, clear coat stuff on it. So I am going to have my door back on my cabinets. <laughs> finally, after like four months, I'm finally getting around to it. So I've got to do that tonight. Um, I'll probably do that before I jump in the bath and start dinner. But anyway, um, the other thing that I have done today that I wanted to share with you guys is a little bit, I wrote all this stuff down here, a little bit of our winter I'm not gonna call it a schedule because the boys are on a break and we're not doing a ton of study like we normally do with our homeschool schedule where we have lots of different subjects and our subjects are very short and very small like small amounts of time um, we are what I would call eclectic homeschoolers. If you wanna have like, there are different, I guess there are different homeschool styles, different methods of homeschooling. We're sort of eclectic. We follow um, a classical schedule in that we go, like history is, I guess the foundational subject. We start at ancient history, we progress all the way through modern history, and we do 
that whole kind of thing three times in a row. So you've got the grammar stage, the dialect stage, the rhetoric stage. This is all classical styled um, education, uh, educational philosophy, I should say. Um, I really like, like we do that with history. We do it with um, science and with geography. We go back and forth. We'll spend two years in world geography, two years in US geography. So we kind of um, rock back and forth between those two things. But the thing that I like about classical homeschooling is you go through it and then you're gonna go through it again and you're gonna go a little bit deeper the second time and then the third time you go through it, you're really gonna hone in on specific um, parts of that subject that your kids are really interested in learning about. Um, so I do like that. So we, we really kind of have our foundation is classical style homeschooling. But then the the icing, I guess, the, the fun part of it is we follow Charlotte Mason, her philosophy in um, lots of subjects. Um, she calls it like a feast. So they're getting lots of exposure to um, a lot of different topics. And we use a lot of reading in our, in our homeschool curriculum. Um, lots of older books. We do lots of classics. I try to I try to switch it up so that we're doing like audiobooks. There's reading that the boys do on their own, and then there's like a family read aloud. We do um, short lessons. That's a Charlotte Mason style thing. Um, nothing over 30 minutes. I don't think any lesson is over 30 minutes. So you're not going to sit and listen to mom read out of a boring textbook for an hour. I'm going to do maybe a 15, 20 minute reading out of a textbook, um, but they're they're kind of Charlotte Mason style textbooks anyway. They're lots of fun. Um, I try to make the lesson fun. And then we do other things to kind of incorporate um, like the reading and more uh, fun kind of projects or whatever along with that subject. So a lesson may be 30 minutes long. So anyway, that is our typical style. We, um, we probably fit into some other little styles here and there too. But like I said, if I'm going to label myself a specific type of homeschooler, I would just say that I'm eclectic. I don't know. Um, I kind of follow the wild and free community too. And that's a little bit eclectic. It pulls from um, Montessori, Waldorf, Charlotte Mason, classical. Like there are a lot of those type of people in the wild and free community. So that's, we do a lot of that kind of stuff too. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's not really a clear cut answer on the style of homeschooling um, that we do because it is pulled. I just pull a little bit of the, a little bit of what I like from all the different styles. But anyway, so because we're not doing our typical homeschool schedule where we have all of the different subjects that we normally do, I wanted to sit down and create a schedule of sorts, more like rhythms in our day for our winter break. And if this works well through winter, then I may try to stick with this when we go back into our regular schedule. So what I've done in the past is I create a schedule. We do a four day homeschool week. Um, on day one, I have a list of all the different things that the boys need to do um, for day one, two, three, and four. And then they can do them in whatever order that they want. Um, they typically get up and do their independent work first. Then we have lunch and then we all sit down in the afternoon and do group work. Um, some Charlotte Mason homeschoolers do that backward, or I guess I do it backward from what they do. They do morning time, which is their group studies together. I like to do it after lunch because when I get up in the morning, that's typically the time that I am more motivated to get my work stuff done. Um, yeah, I just have more energy when I wake up in the morning to like work online with my online stuff. So it's easier for me to have the boys doing their independent work in the morning so I can hustle and get that stuff done. Um, and then after lunch, like it's nice to kind of cozy up on the couch and do our group work and our um, read alouds and things like that. So that's, that's how we do that. Um, but for this winter break, I don't want to have like specific things that we're going to do each day of the week. I want to have some rhythm sort of things to the day and then whatever we get to within those rhythms we'll just kind of see how it goes so I wrote down a little sample sort of thing I think that if, I'm looking at this and it kind of 
I don't know if you guys can see this or not. <laughs> it kind of feels like a schedule, but let me go through it and I will sort of explain my plan. Now, I don't know if I'll stick with this or not. I'm going to try it. Um, I think it is helpful to have a loose schedule or like these little rhythms to your day because it helps. Um, I don't want the boys being bored over winter. They only have an hour of tech time and in the winter it's cold here in East Tennessee so there's only so much time they'll spend outside. I need to get work done just like I normally would and so if I just leave them to themselves then they're going to be fighting and bickering so it's no good. So I need some sort of schedule rhythm thing um, to keep them on track, to keep them learning and keep their minds working and to kind of keep peace in our house <laughs> because they will fight and argue and bicker if they are just left to do whatever. And then I will get interrupted a thousand times with mom, I'm bored. What can I do? Anyway, so I thought it would be fun to try getting up in the morning and having breakfast together. I'm not a big breakfast eater, but I think I'm going to try to get up and sit down at the table and have breakfast with them. Um, and during breakfast, I thought we would read our poem of the day. Um, whatever type of poetry that we're going to be studying, which I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we will listen to our hymns and our folk songs. We usually have one new hymn and one folk song that we listen to each month. And while we are doing a little devotion or Bible study together, I'll kind of turn that down and let that play quietly in the background. Or maybe we'll listen to some of our older composers in the background while we're doing our devotion and Bible study. But I wanted to get all of that stuff done at breakfast just to like start our day in this really um, cozy, beautiful way with poetry, devotions, some good music, and a good healthy meal together. So I think that we're going to try that. Um, after that, that'll probably take about an hour. And then after that, I want um, to continue what we normally do after breakfast with our chores. So each boy has a different chore each day and I, it changes throughout the day. I actually, I took their old homeschool schedule off the wall and I flipped it over and I wrote down a ton of chores on there, how often they need to be done, weekly, monthly, daily, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I'll probably go through that list and give everybody a chore each day. We'll do that after breakfast. And then after that, because I know they're going to be itching to do something on technology wise, technology wise, like on their tablets or whatever, um, I thought they would do some of their school review. So there are some things from school that we will keep doing throughout winter break, but it's not really like if we miss it a day, it's not a big deal. I don't know. So I want to do that. I'm going to call it that little section um, is a little technical education type stuff. So they have an Adventure Academy subscription online. They love getting on there and playing. And so I want them to be able to spend about 30 minutes playing on there. But I want 15 of those minutes to be some sort of subject. So like they'll go into the little academy and they'll... They're like different wings with different subjects and then they'll go to one of those wings and they'll pick a little video or a little game or a little course or something that they're going to learn each day and they'll do that. That'll be about 15 minutes and then they can go and play and do other fun stuff on there that they want to do. Um, and then they also have Duolingo. So they, they do Latin and Spanish on Duolingo. So they'll need to continue doing their 15 minutes a day of that. Um, they have piano that they'll do then. They have 15 minutes um, each that they practice on their piano. And then all of them are going to practice math drills. So I want to try to help them speed up with their um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, maybe even some fraction, decimal percentage stuff. But I want to try to find like some fun games online that, all, that help teach them speed for those things. Um, the boys were taking um, their typing with typing.com. That's where they learn to type. And then after they got decently, I guess they, they, were, they were pretty fast, pretty accurate on there, they transitioned over to a free website called NitroType. And it's like a racing game. So you're, you have these race cars and you are typing and the cars are racing. The faster you type, the faster your car goes. And it has actually helped them um, increase their typing speed and accuracy because you actually fall behind if you're not accurate. So it's helped them because it's like a game and they're they're learning this skill and playing a game at the same time. 
So my goal is to find some sort of um, like math drill game that is on their level. Each of each of the boys are at a different level in math. Um, so on their level, that will help them get better um, at whatever type of math they're doing. And so I wanna do that all through winter so that by the time we start next year, they haven't just not done math for three months and they're, I mean, other than like math that you need when you're living life. But um, I want to keep those skills sharp, the language skills and the math skills. So these are things I want them to do every day. And obviously piano is like an all the time thing. So anyway, after breakfast, after chores, they're going to have some tech time, but it's going to be like more educational tech. It isn't like they can just go off and play a video game if they want. Um, and then after that, I want them to have some free play time. So I want them to be able to go outside. If it's too cold, they can stay inside and play board games together. They can play Legos. They can um, get the Play-Doh stuff out and play, whatever they wanna do. But I wanna have like a free hour where they just pick whatever it is that they wanna do and play together doing that sort of stuff. After that, they will have their tech time, which is where they can watch YouTube, they can play their video games, um, they can play their tablets or phones or whatever apps that they wanna play that day. Um, I wanna get that done before lunch so that they're not asking me for it all day long. When's tech time, when's tech time? So if we do that right before lunch, um, that will give me time to make lunch and kinda do a quick little tidy up before Dean gets home from work. Um, for lunch. So our rhythms in the morning will be breakfast, chores, the technical education kind of time, free play, and then they can have their tech time. And then it'll be one o'clock and Dean will be home for lunch. And what we normally do for lunch is we eat and we watch some sort of family show together. And right now we are going through the old Andy Griffith show series. Um, we all really enjoy that. It's a good show and it has um, some good themes to talk about with the kids and it teaches good values and morals, I think. When we're done with Andy Griffith, we'll probably go on to the Waltons because I think the boys would like that. Um, but anyway, so we eat lunch and we watch a little short show together. And since it's getting cold, normally after lunch and our show, we go outside for a nature walk or the kids play or we do something like that. But because we're going into the winter season, it's kind of hard to do that, especially if it's really cold. Um, we may still do it some if it's like a nice warm day. But if we decide to stay inside, I think that would be the perfect time for everybody to cuddle up on the couch and do a family read aloud. So I am going to pick a book. My sister-in-law actually recommended um, The Book of Virtues. Um, and then I also thought about reading the Serafina series to the boys because I love Biltmore and I, they've never been. And I think that that would be like a fun kind of series for them to read. There are four books in that series. I don't know if we'll get all that done over winter break. I still haven't settled on a read aloud just yet, but that's what I'm thinking we'll do it. I think that that would be a really good time to do it while Dean is home too and he can take a little nap or he can listen <laughs> while I read aloud to the boys. So we'll do that at lunch. And then after lunch, we are going to have a quiet time where the boys will do their regular reading. So they still have a couple books in, I think, history and science that they have not finished from this last term. So they're gonna finish reading those and then anything, any of the books that I bought this year that they didn't read, um, they'll have a choice when they finish the current books that they're reading, they'll have a choice to pick up a book that they didn't get to read and read through those. They're also, they are all reading Harry Potter right now. They're all on different books. So that'll be a good time to read some Harry Potter. Um, they can also listen to an audiobook. I think it would be fun to have like an audiobook for each boy. So I would like to have like an hour of quiet time because I want to have a time during the day where I can sit down and I can do like one of my herbal courses or I can read a book that I'm working on. Um, one of the things that we have gotten away from as the boys have gotten older is this hour of rest. They used to all take naps when they were really little. Now that they're all out of taking naps, I kind of fill the day with school and play and other things, but I think that I wanna try to work this quiet time rhythm back into our day because I think that that's valuable for them to spend some time just quiet by themselves. They can draw or color if they want to. Um, they can rest if they're tired and they feel like taking a nap, they can do that. 
or if they want to read one book the entire time or if they want to divide it up and read several books that time or during that time um, or listen to an audiobook or whatever they want to do I just want that to be kind of like an open time for them um, and then after that we are going to do um, some fun stuff so Maybe we'll work on a handicraft. I would like to teach the boys how to crochet scarves this winter. Um, Dean and I bought them, I can't remember where we were, but we bought them stuff to make paracord bracelets. That's something that we thought that they would um, find enjoyable and fun. So that would be something that we could pick up and do. They love baking in the kitchen with me and obviously it's like gonna be fall and winter. There's gonna be plenty of things to bake so we can do that together. It'll be a time to start making homemade gifts for their cousins and their family for winter or for the holidays. So that's also some stuff that we can do. Um, maybe we can work on some art projects, um, but I just wanna have this like really creative time, I guess, like an hour after, um, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, probably 30 minutes, where we just work on something creative. So it'll be something different each day. If we're kind of in a groove with one thing, we'll just stick with that for a while. We get tired of that, we'll move on to something else. So I think that we'll do that after their quiet time. That way they're well rested and they have good attitudes <laughs> when they come back out and they're learning something new. Sometimes it's easy to get frustrated when you're learning something new and you're having trouble with it. So maybe the rest period before that will help them. We'll see. And then after that, um, this will be about... 30 minutes to an hour before Dean gets home from work, I want to do a time of study. So each month we are going to focus on studying something different. So in November, which is November, it's Native American History Month this month, and I want to study some sort of Native American things with them. Um, we have covered a little bit of Native American history in our history subject in our normal school year. We've done Thanksgiving studies before, but I do not think that Thanksgiving studies accurately help you study Native American heritage and history. Um, so this month, I've gotta actually pull um, some poems, um, maybe some songs, some of our folk songs will just be some Native American type songs, um, some really good books. I don't know, if you guys have any tips or suggestions for this sort of thing, like if you um, have done this yourself or, um, Maybe you are Native American and you have some input that you can share with me on some really good quality stuff that I can teach, um, you know, school age children, not teens, so preteens and um, elementary type age children. That would be perfect. I would appreciate that. Um, any book suggestions on Amazon or thrift books or anything like that, um, I will order that stuff and we are going to spend November studying Native American history. So this will be the time at the end of the day when we sit down, we talk about things, we read, we just uh, maybe work on a project, like we could work on an art project that would be um, something that maybe like beadwork or I don't know, anything that would be typical kinds of things that Native Americans would have done. I know um, making like um, pin clay pinch pots, I think that's what they're called. We've done those before and those were a lot of fun. Um, and the boys use those. So I don't know, just anything like that. Um, and then in December, we're gonna do um, a Christmas devotion. Not well, it's kind of a devotion. We may do an Advent theme or we may do um, just like a Christmas study of the holidays and the traditions and the rituals of Christmas. I don't know. Um, I like covering lots of different areas in the world and how they celebrate celebrate Christmas or Yule. Um, I like to do lots of different things with them around that season, so I'm not quite sure that I wanna do a complete Advent thing. I don't know. But that's what we're gonna do in December. So during this study time, in November, it's gonna be Native American type things, and then in December, it's going to be Christmassy. And then in January, I have not decided what we're gonna do yet, but this will be the time of the day when we really sit down and kind of focus on that kind of study. So this is my idea for our winter break schedule, rhythm, routine kind of thing that we're gonna do. I think if this works out well and the boys enjoy it, it definitely would be something to maybe try next year with our regular school schedule. 
Um, I think we can fit a lot of the things that we do into this. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll just see. I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to try it. Um, and if it doesn't work out, then we'll probably just go back to what we normally do, which is every day we wake up on winter break and we're like, Hey, what do we want to do today? <laughs> we just kind of wing it. But I thought this would be fun to kind of try. Um, that way they aren't feeling bored and they're not like meandering around the house making a mess of it and then having to clean. I still have um, a good bit of time in here that I can get some work done and there's still a good bit of time where I'm spending time with them. We're still kind of staying refreshed on some of the things that we need to stay refreshed on for school. Um, we're still doing a lot of reading. We're still doing a lot of those things. Um, and of course the holidays are busy times, you know, during the Thanksgiving holiday and all of the winter and New Year's holidays and then gearing up to start school like January I feel like I'm prepping for school starting in February so that's a busy time too so I just feel like this winter break is a really good time for us to take a break from all of the normal school we do do some fun things change things up a little bit while we're still learning and able to just like drop everything like we could just drop the whole day and not do it if we have to go somewhere or we have a little holiday get together or we want to go on a play date um which those are non-existent at the moment really <laughs> but you know what i mean um it'll just kind of be nice to have some sort of little rhythm to our winter break that is very loose we can follow it if we want to we don't have to follow it if we don't want to anyway um so to wrap up this long explanation of my Monday and all the things that I've been doing, I don't really know how much more I'll vlog this week because with Dean's um, best friend coming down, um, he may not want to be on my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so I'll probably kind of, uh, if I pull other clips in, then I will talk to you maybe on Tuesday, maybe on Wednesday. I'll probably just be doing a whole lot more of what I did today, which is cleaning and straightening up. Um, kind of, you know, tying up loose ends. There is nothing like having guests come over to your house um, to really light a fire under your bum and make you <laughs> get stuff done that you haven't gotten done in a while or that you've been meaning to do. Um, yeah, at least that's the, at least that's the case for me. So anyway, if I talk to you guys tomorrow, then I'll talk to you tomorrow. And if not, then I'll just upload this video. And this will be my weekly vlog about our winter break schedule. And then I'll check, I'll, I'll see you guys next week if I don't talk to you any further this week. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good week one way or the other, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Tuesday, and that means it's election day here in the U.S., and I just finished voting. Um, the polling station is about five minutes from my house. Um, at least in the district that we live in now. Um, and we live in a really small area, so I didn't have to wait in line at all. So like as soon as I walked in, I got to go vote and that was great. Um, so I was, I literally drove five minutes. It took me about five to six minutes to vote. And then I'm gonna drive five minutes home. So my little I voted sticker. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was my, um, big thing to do today on Tuesday. I was actually going to have Dean pull out some of the leftover pavers from our patio project so I could go ahead and get to work on the new garden beds on the south side of our house when I got home, but I completely forgot about voting, honestly, forgot about it. Um, and so by the time he got home from work and I got ready and ran to vote, um, and by the time I get home, I'm going to have like 30 minutes left and I still need to make dinner and I'm just not going to have time to get to the garden stuff tonight. So we'll put that off until next week and hopefully get these new garden beds, um, made and get them ready so that they are ready by next spring. I just said a lot of readies right in a row. Ready, ready, ready. Anyway. Yep. So that's it. That's all that I had planned. Um, for today. Um, the boys did our first day of our new little rhythms that I talked about yesterday and it went really well. Um, it always sort of takes them a little bit of time to get used to something new. 
So they didn't love it, but they also didn't hate it either. So that's good. Um, I think the more that we do it and the more familiar that everybody gets with it, the easier it will be. Um, so that went well. And like I said, um, I didn't have any other plans other than to do that and work on garden stuff, but I went and voted instead of working on the garden stuff because I think that's important to do. And um, I also just wanna say, I know that there is a lot of stress a lot of anxiety maybe around this year's elections here in the U.S., but I'm not worrying about it. I'm going to do um, my part by voting, my part as an American citizen, by voting and choosing the person that I think is best um, for all the different areas that we were voting for today. And whether or not that person is chosen, God's still on the throne and he's in control and that is really all I need to know. Like I am, I am not in control. Um, and so I'm not going to stress about it all that much. I'm just going to trust that God's will will be done. And, um, yeah. And then I will continue to pray for whoever becomes the leader of our country. Um, and for the other people that I voted for, for, um, Tennessee, like the Tennessee leaders today. I will continue to keep them in my prayer, whether I voted for them or not. So um, I hope that's encouraging to you if you are stressing about this election. Um, yep, so that's pretty much all my thoughts on that right there. <laughs> okay, um, I am going to get out of here. I'm going to head home. i got to make some dinner. And it's getting so dark early. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves tonight. It's really hard to, like, accomplish any projects when it's really dark unless they're indoor projects. So... We'll see. We'll see what we get into, but I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, hopefully. Bye. Hey guys, so it's Wednesday, and I am just sitting here in my house waiting for Dean and the boys to get home from C Students, um, which is like our church's youth group kind of thing. Um, his friend Dan met him in town earlier, and he and his son went to see students with Dean and the boys, and I decided to stay home tonight so I could clean because my house felt like it needed a little bit of a deeper clean than what it gets on a normal daily basis. Anyway, so I got the house cleaned, and I'm just sitting here listening to music, um, reading a book, and waiting on them to get home so they can bring me some food. I'm really hungry. I haven't had any food um, since lunch. And yeah, so I'm just waiting on them. Anyway, I just wanted to pop in here and say hello. And I hope you guys are having a happy Wednesday. And hopefully I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow or sometime this weekend. All right, bye. Are you boys working out? Mama, I'm going to fold this. Zay, you look like you're working out. I'm going to fold this in, though. Okay. You want to throw seeds in? No. Nope. That's what that is. Mom, can I have um, a little bit of a chip? I want to for Blue Joe. Oh, it doesn't look like the fish were after it. What is it? He threw a seed in. The lake looks so nice today. Peaceful. I don't like this. Is it a I lake or a pond? Swim. Look at all the geese. I've never seen anyone kayak, so I don't know. Alright, let's go walk. Is this, um, what is that trail? Goose Creek Trail. Goose Creek Trail. Okay, let's go walk and see what Goose Creek <laughs> in the end, he'll pop the last two, and you'll read the last two. Does that make sense? Hey, what are we supposed to do? Like, do we find balloons that don't have notes in them, which have candy in them? That we don't There's have? no candy. They all have only notes.
Okay. They all, mom, mom left you a prize. The last balloon, wherever it is, will lead you to a prize that she went and you. And that's it. <laughs> Buried underneath the earth. I'm gonna dig. No, hopefully it won't take that long. I will say this though, Dean. There are a couple of clues that these guys will get that you won't, and I'm sorry, it just worked out that way. But so you'll still you'll be able to get most of them. But there's two of them that I know you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> and that's just because it's stuff that they know. That's cool. So you just have to rely on them and their knowledge. Ready, set, go. All right. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> All right, there goes our clue. Remember, Uriah reads it. Guys, I'm just gonna watch you guys. So, as you take this expedition, y'all find your next clue. One word of this expedition. Segment. Come back and get all of our trash. Uh, turn, your, turn to your right and in your, and in your line. No, of sight, me, this way! Boys, so yeah, we'll keep you away. But when, when you make it there, um, um, I see another thing. I see another balloon over there. Yeah. So, guys, listen, listen real quick, just so you know. When you're facing already, this clue. It says turn to your right. Yeah, I know, but it, like, we set it up to where you catch it right here. So you turn to your right, so. <laughs> Rosie, that grass is too tall. So the boys' last clue is here at this pond, and they have gone back to the back pond. Oh, there they are. They figured it out. Such a mess to go back and pick up.
guys, so I'm just popping on here really quickly to wrap up this week's vlog. I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. And um, I know it was a little bit of a hit and miss as far as um, not checking in every single day, but that was just because we had guests in town. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna start up next week's vlog and hopefully it will be a little bit more consistent or I'll be able to be a little bit more consistent with checking in with you guys every day. So I hope you guys had a good week and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.